Now, the map on the left is of who we are currently in terms of the political boundaries of our town wards. But is that your neighborhood? If you look at the upper right hand, is that not a map of school districts relative to the catchment area of the elementary schools? How many of you know what your neighborhood is relative to fire protection? That's what the lower right hand slide, uh, the lower right hand part of the slide is presenting. Ladies and gentlemen, I will contend that Grand Forks is not knowing of itself for who is my neighbor and what more importantly is my neighborhood because we are residents of many overlapping and interlocking and oftentimes contradictory and conflicting neighborhood elements. You know, if we think about this, where are the real neighborhoods of Great Force? Where do the citizens come together and help each other because in some ways maybe my neighborhood on certain tasks and opportunities are a lot smaller than my neighborhood would be if I'm engaged in a civic fashion to some greater good. You know, your neighborhoods could be based on your socioeconomic class, where you're employed, what your social status is. It could be some people, we look at our racial identification, our gender identification, the religious affiliation, your political affiliation. It could be your personal interests and your hobbies. Grand Forks, I will argue until I can be proven differently with a study done by some graduate student Grand Forks is an incomplete college town that does not know itself in terms of its neighborhoods. Now that may not be what a lot of folks like to hear, but it does give us the opportunity to look very seriously, not just a selfie. Selfies are very superficial. We need to really look and dig in deep. You know, how are we expressing in a spatial fashion our family? Yes, what clan are you of? What tribe do you belong to? There are many communities within the community of the Forks. I don't think that. What nation are we a part? Because when we talk about state, we have to look at our interconnectedness to each other. Now, mercifully, I am through with my formal remarks, except for this last slide. trying to construct. I would like to suggest that there are four Latin phrases. See, this is how we're going to make an education. There are four Latin phrases. And you don't need to use the clickers. You do not need to use the clickers. Because if we're going to be constructing community and the assets there, are very, very important in people as well as infrastructure. 
The first thing you need to think about is carpe diem. Seize the day. But you also have to practice caveat emptor. Buyer, beware. I've been here for nigh unto almost 40 years. I have seen transformation. I have seen fadism in terms of land use planning, not just within the city, but the university. And I will contend that part of the reason the University of North Dakota is in financial condition it is at present is because we have not been attentive to long-term, long-range, sustainable development. Caveat emptor, buyer beware. Which is why you need to, Pastina Lente, make haste slowly. Think twice about the implications and the consequences of what is being undertaken. And then, of course, as that old Jesuit priest used to tell me, Nihil in excessu. Nothing in excess. We have a terrible tendency that it's very easy to spend other people's money when we start thinking about what we would like. We need to be more oriented towards sustainability. We need to think about as, as Christy has pointed out, creating these legacies so that ultimately, as, as Pat has noted, certain social issues can be better handled. We need to live within our means, but do so with an eye upon the seven generations of heavens. So, is this where we get to leave and I get to go outside and we can actually start doing things? Or is this the part where we need to have questions and answers? Questions and answers, I think. Thank awesome. You. Let's thank this panel. The message I heard from you, Dr. Munsky, is know thyself. Are you yes. aware of money years? Well, but who I'm are you as a community? Yeah. No, I've not. always wanted to be on the stage. <laughs> and uh, for the improv people, don't worry. I'll probably be asleep by 1 o'clock. <laughs> I just want to point out, notice that he shared with the panel his water eggs, not his rhythm and candy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, but as Christy points out, you know, sometimes you do need to occasionally, and it is Doug's Candy's Pebbles, by the way. I, uh, Betty, Betty years ago, got tired of people like Peter Johnson and others coming into the Woodman's and saying, you know, that. That troublesome old professor must be handing out these jelly beans. And where are they? You know? So she finally. Jelly beans. Yeah. I never said jelly beans. Well, you said that. Well, yes, yes, but you know, it's it's all in telling the story and elaborating it. <laughs> you know, as, as William Randolph Hearst used to say, I never let the truth get in the way of a good story. <laughs> Of course, that's why he doesn't have Pulitzers named after. Yeah. So, um, yeah, when you when you when you uh, are are asked, you know, you know, notice something that's not right, and and Christy was was right. <laughs> you need to show.
share those. So if you uh, do come to the session that I have uh, responsibility, and is them all, uh, this is not to be construed to be a bribe to come to it. But, uh, How do you think you got on this panel? Just saying. <laughs> I need all I need all the reaffirmation and authentication that I can. So, so we do have a few minutes for your questions and comments, and I don't know if we got anything in uh, on Twitter here, but there's a question here. Do you want to come down to the mic? And would you mind moving the mic back just a little bit? I have to move forward to clear the aisle. So we have Professor Antonova who's going to ask a question. Thank you very much for this opportunity to learn so much about the community where I've been living for the last seven years of my life. Uh, being the newest, perhaps, in this room, U.S. citizen, which was initiated last week as a U.S. citizen. <laughs> you had to share here and perhaps the most shocking data that you presented about the level of poverty in this community. On the surface everything looks so good here. It's a quiet nice town where crime is, at least the visible crime is not very high. Things look nice and green in the summertime, of course not right now. <laughs> but in general it feels a nice safe community and then suddenly you understand that under the surface there is suffering, there is poverty, there are problems that people are dealing with every day. So listening to that, um, I was going back in my memory to the country where I'm coming. I, I came from Bulgaria and to the dark 1920s in my country where um, politically but economically mainly the country was very poor with large agricultural uh, population. And I remember from my books of history, because I didn't live in this time of Taos, and from the, thought, from, from the stories that my father used to tell me, that there was one person, political leader in my country, who, in, who invented something that actually helped everybody. And this was the cooperative movement in Bulgaria, agricultural cooperative movement. When I came here to North Dakota, I was so pleasantly surprised to learn that actually cooperative movement had very strong roots on this land. People used to get together and buy together equipment and do something together, be uh, going with common ownership, and that helped them a lot enormously. So listening to the data here and to the problems, I was thinking, do you think that if cooperative roots are engaged again and if the municipality helps, enables people to come together and to resolve their issues and if banks provide loans uh, at, at favorable rates of course for groups of people uh, that decide let's say to make a cooperative um, kindergarten You've mentioned that there is a problem with affordability of child care. So let's go together, let's bring together a group of people who have small children and they will create their own kindergarten with the help of course of banks and municipalities, etc. And then uh, you've mentioned also the not affordable housing. I mean, there are problems with affordable, affordable housing. And I know this because I live in the southern part of the city. And I, I know what the rents are for the new, newest uh, uh, buildings there, apartment buildings, above 1,000 per month. <laughs> Who can afford this? I mean, uh, so based on this, I was thinking about, and maybe Professor Monsky can also help us with his deep, deep knowledge of the history and the, uh, the traditions in this land here. Um, is there any hope that cooperativism can again be engaged, initiated, helped, and this could help the communities here? Thank 
Great question. Yeah. And I'd like to throw something out here. If you read this morning's Grand Forks Herald, it announces that the University of North Dakota needs to uh, subcontract the Ray Richards Golf Course to another entity as part of our fiscal restraint and restructuring. I'd like to propose that what my colleague from communication has noted about a cooperative, why not have the University of North Dakota working with the Grand Forks Greenway and the Park District in collaboration with the Center for Entrepreneurship, an independent young, and I, I give Marcus Wax a hard time because he is living proof you can take classes with me and still be a success. Okay? But can you imagine what would happen if the Ray Richards Golf Course were offered as a place in which university students from kinesiology could practice teaching skills of golf as they have for their class, for the general public? What communication students who are working with advertising, what students who work in College of Business and Public Administration could do for management and marketing, and of course with public administration, because I see uh, Dr. Hartzell is here, you know, it's the whole notion of how do you create legally these, these cooperatives, because you take a topic, something as quote, simple as golf, which is really not as significant as childcare, but it can be applied to any level. Although in terms of priorities, maybe you want to have a child cooperative with the golf cooperative because think of the great field trips that could occur with that youth because you've got to get the children out doors. So I, I thank you for that. Quick response? Just a quick response. Um, one of the things that I am very proud of and I think as a community we should be is that there's already a lot of cooperation, collaboration happening among the health and human service sector. Um, the ideas that you presented in terms of bringing forth um, child care and other things, these have already been discussed and in some instances have been put into play. Um, you'll hear in a lot of smaller towns where they don't have something like this, people are starting to work on this. And I think there was a community, it was highlighted in the local news perhaps just a week or so ago that talked about this, but this is also why perhaps people don't see Grand Forks and the poverty, as you pointed out. There aren't slums, there aren't other things. The agencies are doing a great deal of work that is keeping, in other words, they're doing their job. <laughs> and so well at times that people don't recognize that there is a need out there. The problem is there's always somebody coming up behind them and working with them. But working together and bringing folks together, absolutely very important with all that. So thanks for that. That comment. I think um, moving the needle in something like poverty being the, the depth that it is here and that it is unseen. I, I look at the networks or the systems that are set up in community with city government and city staff, university, health and human services, and all of these different groups that may or may not be working with some of these things, but economic, you know, EDC had concerns about housing and daycare, and so everybody is sharing some of those same <coughs> concerns, where do we begin to really get together and with university talent and city talent, how do you start to have deeper, more meaningful conversations on getting that 22% down to 15%? When, you know, what, what can we do? Are we, are we a college town or are we a, a town with a college in it? Mm -hmm. And can we create those relationships, I think, with the university to build stronger neighborhoods to define maybe the geographic neighborhoods to help address poverty, to come up with some creative solutions and entrepreneurial 
spirits like Marcus and Center for Innovation, how do we get the people, the right people together in the room and figure out how to move the needle on those important issues or to seize the opportunities, like with the library? Good comments. And I, and I like what you were bringing up there too about how to go from the next level of cooperation where we do have a lot of entities who may be cooperating and really involve the people who have those issues or concerns or passions or needs and they themselves work together and create something that addresses what they need. So I think it maybe is, is, is the next level and lovely to point out that we already have a history of that in the state, in this community. Well, this, this just is what a primer for the next sessions. If you haven't heard something related to the next 10 sessions, we didn't do our job. Uh, we have, uh, as you know, population, economic, social issues, retention of uni graduates, environment and natural resources, history, neighborhood, arts and community education, communication and politics, all coming up. And I can't imagine you haven't heard something that would interest you in uh, following up. What's going to happen in those breakout sessions is we, um, I hope, somebody taped on the wall uh, with frog tape that won't peel off the paint. Three different sheets of paper. One that says questions, one that says ideas, and one that says concerns. And you've got a broad question in, in the program inside that just kind of opens it up. And the whole point here is to share that, to share what you know hear from other people, get those written down. You, you may not solve any problems, but we're gonna take all of that and I hope to post all of this, put this back out onto the Grand Forks Library, a public library website. So you'll know what happened in the sessions you couldn't go to, but you'll also uh, have some ability to retain what happened and I hope then we can move it forward from there. And my own community journalism students are gonna be in the room writing stories about those and we will be posting those as well and also on the Central Com Community Engagement website. So please, don't think of this conversation as ending, but maybe just really starting something. So at this point I want to um, call out our student volunteers who can lead you. Maybe you might have to lead some of them. I'm not sure some of them are learning too where these groups are. Uh, but you'll all go together. Um, it's, it's a mental map that we're going to work with here. right? So I'm going to see if Jackie is in here for population. Jackie, wave your hand. And you stand up so they see you. If you're just in population. If you want, I'll just want to see Jackie and then uh, hang on and I'll keep going. Pa um, and population is at Central High School Fire Room. Economics is going to the Ember, and that's Brock and Jessica. Where are you? There's a little way back there. Brock is there. Everybody see Brock. Social issues is in here. If you guys would just stay where you are now, but come down here after we have all left. And that's Katie, who's going to lead you right on. Then we have retention of community graduates at Central High School Black Box Theater, and that's Paige and Maddie. Paige and Maddie, where are you? See over there. Everybody see? Wait again. Wait again. Got it. Then we have environment and natural resources. Rhombus Brewery. Everyone wants to go there. Jessica and Cheyenne, where are you? <laughs> Jessica and Cheyenne. On your way out of the way, please leave lots of clickers. We borrow these clickers. Spend them. Leave your clickers on your way out. Clicker people, are you there? Grabbing clickers? There. Okay. And uh, where are we? History is in Edward Management Trust, and that's Paul and Bethany. Where are you, Paul and Bethany? There we go. History, that's history. Neighborhoods, Empire Backstage. That's back here, and we have Marie. Roll around. Right? Where's Marie? There's Marie. Everybody wants to follow her. Arts and Community Education, Fireball Theater, and Logan. Logan. Over there. She's there. Communication, Simmons Flint. Ian. Ian. Over here. Here's the Ian way back there. Going to Simmons Flint. And politics is in the Empire Basement, Black Box Theater. Amanda and Daniel. And Dana Hartzell's going there too. Everybody way in Black Box Theater where there is a, an elevator. Out the door if you need an elevator. See you all back here at 1 o'clock. Go to your sessions. Have some lunch and come back. Thank you so much. And turn in your clickers.